Like the photo montage tool, the motion tool is also one of my really favorite things to dig into, especially when I need to spice something up or if I've got an intro piece or I've got a bumper where I need to stack a bunch of things up and have them sort of spice up that in-between moment or maybe add a little bit of life to something that might otherwise be a little bit boring. So let's look at the motion tool and see how you can use it to spice up some of those bumpers or some stinger pieces or in-between types of pieces of media or to create better titling sequences and so forth. So we're going to, from inside of Production Assistant, launch the Motion tool. And we can go in and add any number of, of pieces of media. We're going to uh, go with media that I've already got in there. And we can add more media to the collection if we wish. So let's go into Add and scroll up and grab some different pieces of music here, or different pieces of media here. I'm going to grab a couple of sports pieces. Choose Open. Now I've stored a number of different pieces of media in my, my bin here. And I need to first choose a backpack. What do I want to have behind my media? So we can see what each of these looks like here. Just look at a, a variety of different things. I think we'll go ahead and go with this rolling liquid look that we've got here. Now, currently I've got this set up to have an initial start that's three seconds into my, my piece of media. And we're just going to use the same music that we used earlier. And there's no markers here. We're just going to lay it in. We could choose to alternate or stagger our media or have it start together so that the, the media is moving together. You'll see what that does in just a moment. We can choose a border for our media. And I'm going to start with a soft edged border. Now, we currently have a preset of left right passing set up for this. We can go into an edit list and change or choose how we want things to behave and change the, the behavioral movement front to back or left to right or back to front and so forth. And we can add a variety of different things to it. So we might even want to choose a, a front to back there as well. Choose OK. Now we've added some other movement to it. We can also go in and choose the duration that the media is on the timeline and the spacing of the media on the timeline. I'm going to set this up to the spaced about uh, two frames or two seconds and 15 frames, or roughly two and a half seconds apart. And we'll choose OK. Now it's going to, at random, set up our media at different levels. So let's just simply choose OK. And here it's set up our media for us, and we've got some motion. Here we go. You can see how our, our Media is floating over top of each other there. We've got some front to back media and some side to side media going on. And we can just keep playing with this until we find exactly what we like or until we find something that's, that's exactly our flavor. So let's take that zoom out. We'll just remove that from our, our list here. So let's click on Edit List, click on Zoom, and remove the, the zoom from the list here. We'll leave everything so that it's moving left and right passing. We're going to start it at the cursor there. Choose OK. We still have three tracks of video, but now they're moving only side to side. And we can make this be as complex as we'd like. So let's undo there. And again, we'll open up the tool. And let's go into Edit List and tell it that we want it to make, say, five tracks. Now we have five tracks of media, all laid in there very quickly, and lots of depth. So you can see how we can use this tool to create all kinds of, of deep movements. You might want to lay some front to back over top of side to side or top to bottom and so forth. You could, for instance, take a series of titles and have the titles flying all over the screen and moving in a variety of different ways. Or maybe you've got the same image of someone talking and you want to have that flying through to show that this person has interviewed a number of different people. But there's all kinds of creative uses for this motion tool. So this one, especially combined with the photo montage tool, you can create some incredibly deep, thick, and, and rich composites if you want to with just the, the click of a button or in the blink of an eye create all kinds of fancy looking titles or, or overlay sequences or introductory sequences. So there's a lot that you can do with, with this particular tool. Let's move on to some of the other tools that we're going to find inside of Production Assistant. Let's undo that and remove our, our media from the timeline here. 
what if you want to use your own background? We can do that as well. So let's go back and we'll recreate our sequence using a, a user generated background. So if you want to use your own background, we can go in and click on user and go in here and find a background that we'd like to use. So I'm just going to slide up and find a piece of video or a piece of media that we can, can stick in there. It doesn't have to be video. It can be a QuickTime file or it can be a JPEG file or you know, some other type of, of media that we might want to work with in there. I think we'll go in and grab uh, a main cityscape. Even though we're using cityscapes as our main um, focus, let's use that as our background. We'll choose OK. And this sets the project up exactly as we had it just a moment ago. Except now we have a cityscape as a background. Now in this particular case, we don't see the cityscape um, quite the same as we might want to, simply because it's, it's matching some of the media that's on the timeline. So one thing we could do is go in and grab one of our video effects tool, and for instance, we can turn this track into an all black and white track. So now it doesn't have any color left in it, and that helps separate it. Another thing that we might want to do is, is add a little bit of glow to it. So we'll just put a, a white highlight on that track, and we'll just intensify it just a little bit here. There we go. And now we've got a different look, so we can see that floating across the top. We could also reduce the opacity of that track just simply by drawing that down a little bit. And that still gives us some motion, but it allows it to be a little bit more visible. So again, there's a lot of ways that you can use this tool and work with some of the background. Let's dig a little bit more deeply into the motion tool. So here we've been able to create a background out of one of the same pieces of the media that lets some of the other media float on top and be very beautiful. One of the, the uh, tricks that I'll give you and when you're working with this tool is it's a good idea that you've got some nice contrast happening between your background and whatever's in the foreground. It's just a, a great way to work with the tool. You notice here where we've got a lot of contrast, it, it really helps it sing out. So that's just one of the ways that you might want to work with this tool.